So here's what these genetic studies look like. Uh, this is known as a genome-wide association study. This in particular is a very influential study that uh, systematically looked at a huge number of people uh, for IQ, the phenotype of IQ. And what you see here is this is called a Manhattan plot. You're supposed to think of these as different kind of buildings. And uh, what you see is the height of the building is kind of the statistical significance of the result. And so the strongest, you know, uh, tallest building here um, has a very high linkage uh, significance. The probability of that being due to chance uh, is very low. Uh, these are, this is basically 12 zeros uh, and then a one. That's what this log 10p means. Um, so this is very likely very strongly connected to IQ. However, when you look at this one gene with this very significant linkage, it turns out that it actually indiv independently only accounts for a tiny amount of the variability, less than a percent or maybe around a percent. Uh, and so what that says is that all of these different genes need to kind of be added together to explain uh, the overall heritability contribution. So if we look at uh, nonverbal or G, these different kind of estimates, these are all estimates of intelligence here, you have to add together many of the genes. So any one gene is only doing a very little amount of the work in explaining these complex phenotypes. And this same result has been found over and over again when we look at all of these GWAS studies, these genome-wide studies, which have huge numbers of uh, subjects. They're pooling over hundreds of thousands of individuals. And, and when you look at that scale, you understand that genes are really having very small effects individually. And that actually makes sense. Each of these genes is coding for some small element of the overall story. There's not gonna be a huge amount of genetic variation here because if there was, stuff wouldn't probably work. You need to have something that, that has, you know, actually enabled successful development processes to take place, et cetera. And, and they've analyzed, you know, where are these different genes? What kind of effects do they have overall? And, you know, there's some interesting uh, stories there. A lot of them are on the regulatory uh, kind of junk DNA uh, aspects of the genome. And so that suggests that, in fact, yeah, these regulatory things are really important in, in whatever it is that, that genes are coding for IQ. Uh, and again, to really understand how these things work, we really need a much more detailed understanding of whole, that whole developmental process of how the brain is unfolded and, and everything. And as we've talked about many times throughout this course, very likely a lot of these things are going to have some influence on these kinds of motivational dispositional factors that uh, then accumulate over time to express things like IQ. And one thing they can do with these genetic factors is look at, you know, how these different genes that have been identified for uh, an association with IQ are also associated with other outcomes. Uh, and you can see uh, a ton of different kind of uh, effects. Most of them, you know, are not that significant, uh, but educational attainment is rather strongly significantly related as you might expect, given the overall relationship between IQ and educational attainment, it's basically essentially the same construct, more or less. There is there is some link to overall brain size, which is interesting, uh, and you know other behavioral factors like smoking, uh, you know, uh, positive association with anorexia. We'll, we'll see in the next chapter in terms of uh, association with conscientiousness, which also is linked to we think to IQ, uh, and then all these negative kind of outcomes. Uh, in terms of obesity control, uh, all these things kind of have to do with kind of self-control, uh, ability to resist uh, temptations, those kinds of things, perhaps. Um, and then interestingly, this kind of Alzheimer's effect here. Okay, so there's lots and lots of interesting things you can learn from looking at the genes. Even if they have these relatively small effects, there still are real effects there, and they're real, they're, they are very interesting to understand. Another very important factor that leads to a, 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 an underlying overestimate of the effect of genes is this idea that the effect of genes is greatly magnified in the, in the interaction with the environment. 
So these are, uh, this is known as a gene by environment correlation or a gene by environment interaction. This idea that uh, genes shape our uh, environmental experience and that that then kind of magnifies the overall effect of these genes. So one way to understand this is, uh, for example, if you have some genetic factor that maybe makes you predisposed to becoming shy, uh, and maybe you start to be, you know, looking, spending a lot of your time reading or doing things on the computer. And so you become this kind of geek like personality. Um, and then, uh, it, you know, that kind of has this positive feedback loop, right? If you spend more time reading, you learn more, you get more interested in that kind of stuff. And then uh, you seek out friends who are also geeky. And then you talk about geeky stuff. Um, and so that kind of whole kind of environment is shaped by this kind of, you know, initial, perhaps quite small difference in, in, you know, personality variables, like, you know, how shy are you? How introverted are you? Um, and then that, that kind of has this major effect on the kind of environment that you're exposed to and that you yourself select and shape. So these kinds of interactions uh, are, are really taking place all the time with the environment. And it's very difficult really to separate out gene versus environment effects. And that's kind of this overall point. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> geeks are, are, are cooler now than they used to be uh, when I was in high school. But really, fundamentally, everything is a nature-nurture uh, interaction, right? Um, and so, you know, this basic idea that, you know, you need a certain level of basic level, we talk about often Maslow hierarchy of needs, uh, and, you know, if you're not getting your basic level needs of, of, you know, security and food met, then you can't really develop beyond that too well. Um, and so obviously the environment is going to influence uh, how much any of these factors play out in that context. And so it's really hard also to tell the difference between uh, the genetic and environmental contributions of parents because they're contributing so strongly to both your genetic and your environmental uh, uh, effects. Twins reared apart is a great way to look at that. Of course, those are very rare cases and it's hard to get enough data there to really tell us that much. And, you know, the brain is a very plastic learning system. And so it's going to be shaped over the course of the environment. So small changes, again, with this kind of geek principle, uh, small changes uh, that, that lead to different kinds of environments can really have big effects. And then interestingly, we expect these effects to take place over time. And if you look at the data, very interestingly, the uh, heritability estimates for IQ actually go up over time. And that's very surprising because uh, genes, as we said, are mostly expressed during this developmental process when your bodies and your brains are being formed. That's when the vast majority of these genetic factors are kind of being expressed and, and shaping uh, your initial kind of physical shape. Um, and that, uh, so you'd expect the genes to have their biggest effect kind of early on and to decrease over time as a function of now all this random stuff that's happening in the environment um, that should undermine the effect of the initial genetic factors. But in fact, it goes the opposite way. And that's really surprising and really indicative of the idea that, in fact, whatever the genes are contributing, they are shaping the process of learning, the shape, the process of adaptation, how your, your, your system is formed over the course of interaction with the environment over your entire you know, period up to young adulthood, um, that, that those, those you know, whatever individual differences are there in the genes are kind of having their effects through these interactions with the environment to shape your IQ. And there's this very interesting additional effect here called the Flynn effect, where every decade people are increasing their IQ scores by roughly 10, fact, 10 percent points uh, on that normalized scale. And so you have to keep renormalizing the IQ scale to keep it normalized at 100. But at an absolute level, people are getting smarter all the time, right, over generations. And so that, again, indicates that this kind of plasticity uh, is really underlying IQ as opposed to these kind of more fixed genetic concepts of IQ. So bottom line, our understanding of things like intelligence from a genetic perspective reinforce everything that we've seen before, that it's all about this kind of learning and plasticity and motivation factors. And yes, genes have an effect on those factors.
and that plays into the IQ, but really it's interacting through the environment. And because it's interacting through the environment, that gives us ample opportunity to intervene in the environment to make sure that everybody can, can reach their full potential of IQ. Okay, so here's a, a quick summary. We went through a lot of stuff in the genes chapter here. So just to make sure you, every, everybody's on the same page, uh, we just have some terminology to reinforce. So genes are made up of DNA, develops how, determines how the body develops, this program that uh, builds all the blocks and puts them in the right place. So the genome type is all of the genes, the whole collection of genes, and alleles is this name for the different variants that people might uh, inherit from their parents. Only a small percentage of the genome is actually different between people, about 0.6%. Phenotype is the kind of measurable traits, IQ, ADHD, you know, body weight, height, etc. cetera. Uh, behavioral genetics is this process of using uh, these kinds of various techniques to estimate genetic contributions to the phenotypes um, and understanding the, the relationship between genetic and environmental influences. Heritability is the amount of uh, variance between people. Almost everything has some level of heritability. Uh, the twin estimates have been around 0.5, but now we think that they're lower. The environment is split up into these components of shared or common versus unique. All these genes have these strong potential for gene environment kind of interactions and correlations. So uh, the environment is affected by these genes and different people respond differentially to uh, the same environment as a function of their genetic background.